Sister and Broken Wings on WROI, and it's that time of month again for the Woodlawn Hospital Report, and we've got COO Brad Rogers joining us in the studio today. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Paul. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? You know what? We're well. Look outside. It's beautiful, nice sunshine. I know it's a little chilly, but I'll take this every day over that stuff we had last week. Uh, I try not to think about that. Yeah. Yeah, I saw it, unfortunately, in the forecast for overnight or early morning one other day this week, and I went, no, it's too late into the year for this. Who do we call about that, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I blame Mother Nature. There you go, there you go. <laughs> so, uh, you guys just had your meeting. Yeah, Board of Trustees meeting was yesterday. Um, got a lot of stuff going on, and, and uh, I'm really kind of excited about these next few months. Uh, some of the things we've just accomplished and some of the things that we've got uh, coming up. Okay. So, yeah, pretty exciting. So if you'd like to, we'll go ahead and get started. We'll go through that fun stuff, the financials first, and get that out of the way, and then we can talk about the meat of the business. Yeah, let's do this. Um, March, a little bit slower than we uh, projected, but uh, overall turned out with a profit. We had about $13 million in gross revenue. Um, you know, then we had about $8.8 .8 million in and adjustments and write-offs, whether that be contractual things or, or, or uh, bad debt, those kinds of things, ends up with about a $4.3 million total operating revenue. And then we had about $4.8 million in operating expenses. So then you look at that and you go, okay, that's about a $500,000 uh, operating loss for the month. And you are correct. A little bit slower in uh, um, the hospital. So that's kind of a mixed blessing. Much fewer uh, admissions, uh, COVID's down, those kinds of things, uh, which are great for the public health and, and great for the community, um, but that did negatively affect the, the finances a little bit. However, we did uh, receive about $844,000 in non-operating revenue, and that's revenue that we receive based on partnerships we have with long-term care settings, with uh, pharmaceutical manufacturers for trying to make sure we keep pricing fair and, and, and uh, uh, you know, accessible to everyone in the community through some of those partnerships. So taking that into account, we about a, about a $329,000 uh, overall net profit. Okay. Um, so better than we expected for that time of year, um, but you know, very thankful that the, those partnerships have been very helpful. Yeah, so, absolutely. So uh, lower than we expected, however, pretty positive overall. And, and really with some specific areas that have been positive, um, our swing bed program, it continues to be something that uh, is growing. Um, so far, year to date, we're up 246% um, above our projected uh, volumes for that. And, and so I really want to talk about that just for a few seconds yeah. um, to let the community know what that means. So swing bed is a Medicare designated skilled nursing stay. And so it's an alternative to going to a long-term care setting. Um, we can keep you uh, up to you know, 100 days if we needed. Um, it is for individuals who have an injury, an illness, or a recent surgical procedure that requires them some additional acute care um, in a sense that they're going to need help with, you know, activities of daily living. So they may need to have physical or occupational therapy, um, speech therapy. Uh, maybe they need a, a specific medication infusion that they can only get in the, in the hospital setting. Um, it is a stay that's designed typically for that idea of returning to home functional. So instead of going home um, and then having to come back and, and uh, doing outpatient therapies or having home health therapies, um, which is all of the time our goal, this is for that middle group who's not quite ready for that yet. So if you have a family member or loved one uh, yourself that uh, is going to have to have a procedure done who have recently had an illness that's really decreased your ability to be independent at home, this is an option for you. Uh, most insurances cover it, not all, um, but it's a great option and one of the reasons why we think it's important for the community is we are the only four-star facility within 50 miles of here and that includes nursing home facilities, long-term care facilities, and so what that means is, is that we can give you a quality of care that's unsurpassed around us. Right. It also allows you or your loved one um, to have the emergency room right there in case something happens, to have uh, quick access to x-rays and lab work, and, and your own primary care physician, if it's a Woodlawn physician, um, can be there and monitor you um, as you go through that stay. So it's something we're promoting more and more. 
um, and as you can tell, you know, it's, it's made a big difference this year for us, and we've helped a lot of people who didn't have to transition after their hip or knee replacement or after their uh, long stay in the hospital after a surgical procedure or an illness. They were able to stay at Woodlawn and then go directly home independently rather than leave Woodlawn, go somewhere else, and then go home. So I uh, just want everybody in the community to know that's available. We were also up in areas uh, um, like surgery last month. Uh, we were up in ultrasound, nuclear medicine, and physical therapy as well. So seeing some positive gains in lots of those areas. So uh, from that standpoint, I think, you know, again, we always talk pre-COVID and, and now. Yeah. We're getting there. We're getting <laughs> there. Um, that, that curve is slow, but uh, we are headed in that direction. Good. Yeah. Yeah, pretty good, good month overall. Um, on to the non-financial stuff, which is kind of my favorite clinical side. Um, I want to say a huge congratulations to uh, Don Gabrich. Uh, Don Gabrich is our Director of, of Accreditations and Certifications for the hospital. Uh, Don and the team that she brought together, particularly with the emergency department and, and the cardiology groups, um, did a phenomenal job in the last two months. And uh, now Woodlawn Hospital is chest pain accredited. Um, what that means is, is that the quality of care, the timeliness of care um, is such that uh, uh, we are performing at a very, very high level for the community. Um, it helps us maintain standards. Um, for example, how quickly we can get you into the area or into the hospital and get a um, EKG or a CAT scan or, a, or uh, your lab work done, those kinds of things. Because all of that is the idea that in, in heart and uh, um, stroke, care, you know, time means tissue. So the faster we can get those things done and get those results back for the physicians or providers in-house to make decisions, the better the outcome for you as a patient. And so that's something that they've worked on for a year, it took 12 months, and we had our uh, um, assessment by them last month, just a couple days really after we had our last uh, um, radio presentation. And they passed with flying colors and did a great job. So Woodlawn Hospital, in addition to being stroke certified, is now chest pain certified or accredited. Um, awesome and here. that'll be kind of a lifelong learning thing for us. Um, we'll have to maintain those standards, report on those standards. And so it provides an exterior accountability that keeps us up on our game and helps us move and change with any changes in science or any changes in care across the country. So very, very positive thing. Um, part of that certification or accreditation also is something that's going to benefit the community um, in another way, and that is education. So you're going to see more um, community education, community health fairs, and things like that that, that are going on. Um, you know, we talked about last month, and I think even the month before, um, we had a, a community health fair here recently. Yeah. Um, and so kind of the results from that really just let you guys know, you know, we were able to serve 20 people that day. Um, they got a chance to get their blood pressures and heart rates and oxygen saturations, glucose tested, their general strength. Uh, they were tested for um, falls to determine if they're a fall risk. Um, they were able to speak to a dietitian, a pharmacist, um, lots of things right there on site at the community center. Um, and in doing that, we were also able to identify uh, for people who needed to get their mammograms, had not gotten their, their um, screenings done. So part of that is getting out into the community, providing more um, health fair type things, more education. So, you know, look for us this summer to, at the 4-H fair. We'll be there and we'll be doing some more of those things for the community um, as we move forward. Oh, that sounds great. Um, at the board meeting yesterday, one of the topics that came up and things for approval was um, electronic health records. So every department in the hospital has a different need or a different way they use the our electronic health record. Mm -hmm. And our oncology department is very specialized and the um, health record that we had is not really meeting the needs of those physicians in that department very well. So the board yesterday very graciously and understandingly approved um, a standalone system that will interface with ours um, to provide those physicians and those nurses and those patients with a more um, user-friendly oncology platform. Okay. Um, it is such a specialized area of care um, that, uh, it, that they really needed something that worked for them so that they weren't 
um, having to continue to do things on paper and scan them in and those kinds of things. So board was very nice yesterday and, and uh, our director of oncology, uh, Lee, did a great job on that and they approved that yesterday and we'll move forward with that over the next few months. Good. So, yes. Um, laboratory and diagnostic imaging and this is really more of a public service announcement. I wanted to let everyone know that beginning May 28th, the uh, outpatient laboratory and outpatient diagnostic imaging departments are going to have some changes in their hours. So beginning on the 28th of May, they'll be open um, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturdays and Sundays. They will be closed on national holidays. Um, however, just make sure everybody understands that anytime there's a stat order, it's 24-7, seven, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So anything that is an emergent or a stat order from a physician will get done every day. Um, but on those other days of the week and other times, the general outpatient labs will be 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and no holidays. Okay. Um, as well as with our imaging department. Um, kind of things coming up in the community. This is really a, a reminder for the Woodlawn Foundation that the annual uh, golf outing is coming up for the hospital. Um, you can get in touch with Deb Paxson at our Community Relations Department, or you can get in touch with the Woodlawn Foundation. Um, get your teams ready, get your sponsorships out. This is a, a huge part of their overall annual fundraising. Um, it's a lot of fun. I'm a horrible golfer. I'm going to tell everyone right now on both the television and the radio, um, whether you see me or hear me golf, you'll know that it's not done well. Um, but it's a great day, and the, the amount of things that they have been able to donate to the hospital and the community in the past is uh, something I don't think the community really knows about. And just a quick example, um, when the pandemic first hit, um, Woodlawn Hospital traditionally only had two ventilators, and that's really all a hospital our size ever needed. Right. Now those two ventilators were well, they were well within their working parameters. However, they were 23 years old. Wow. Um, they worked, they worked fine, but the problem we started to have was immediately that getting the um, supplies for them because of their age became almost impossible. And then right in the middle of the pandemic, we were told at the end of 2020, the company would no longer service them mm. um, because they were too old for them. So. Um, right away when, when the pandemic happened, um, I reached out to the Woodlawn Foundation and I reached out to the Indiana Community Foundation. And um, those two organizations stepped up and did uh, something in a time frame that was not only amazing, but also just compassion that was amazing. They bought us two ventilators. Um, and so we were able to get two ventilators ordered and in and that money came from the foundation and that foundation money comes from these golf outings right. and those kinds of things so um, all of that money from the Woodlawn Foundation goes right back into buying needed equipment for the hospital that's above and beyond their traditional budget or if something comes up like this yeah that you had never anticipated um, they're right there to help out the hospital so please support the golf outing get out there sponsor a hole if you're a business sponsor a team it's a great time um, you're welcome to make fun of me. Um, I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, my golf ball will be over on the right-hand side of every fairway um, <laughs> near the trees. Um, but yes, get out and support that group. And then the only other thing on there that I really want to talk about is our, our we've got a great announcement. Okay. Woodlawn Hospital has a formally signed contract with uh, Alan Fisher, um, who will become our new CEO. Uh, Mr. Fisher comes to us with 20 years of CEO experience. Um, he has worked in Indiana in the past and has uh, decided he wants to move back this direction. Uh, he is currently the CEO in uh, the state of Washington in a rural critical access hospital and um, is excited to move back this direction. Um, he has some family up north on Lake Erie, uh, about two and a half, three hours away. And so he's excited to get back to the Midwest. Um, he will begin with us mid to late June, kind of working out the details on uh, when he's able to leave where he's at and, and the, you know, then the fun of packing and re unpacking and all that kind of stuff. So I'm um, excited to have that. The board wanted us to uh, make sure we announced that. And, you know, he's a fellow of the American College of Healthcare Executives um, with 20 years experience. We look forward to that. 
Uh, we look forward to that partnership with him and, and working through and, and growing some of our services. So very excited to have that uh, happen. So as you guys uh, will start hearing that that's been determined and signed and we're, we're ready to move forward. Um, you know, we, we were in the past at Woodlawn pretty blessed. I mean, we had one CEO for you know, 16, 17 years. Um, and in terms of a CEO's life expectancy, that one organization, that's about three times the national average. Um, it's about 4.8 to 5.5 years um, per organization for a CEO. Um, so we were blessed here for many, many years. Um, and, and I think, you know, we're really excited to bring in someone with, you know, that 20 years experience and move on to that next stage. So very exciting month at the board. Yeah, very yeah. much sounds that way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, other than that, you know, we just wish everybody good health. And, and uh, if you have any issues or questions for us, please give us a call. Uh, we look forward to taking care of you guys. All right. So um, we've got some upcoming uh, health fairs going to be at the 4-H fair. Yes, we'll be at the 4-H fair this year. Uh, providing a variety of just uh, screening services and be there for any questions and such and really the point of that too was Paul is if you as an organization or you as a uh, business in the community if you would like education um, on any given topic reach out to us we'll figure out a way to get that done you know part of our job as a not-for-profit community-based hospital is to help the community in any way we can yeah so we want to get out there as much as possible you know Hoping and praying we keep down the same trajectory with pandemic and we can get back out there. But, you know, I think both the community and truthfully our caregivers, they miss that direct contact with the community. Um, you know, that's, that's why we went to school to do what we do. Um, nurses and doctors and therapists and, and, and all those in the healthcare, that's why we're here. Yeah. So we look forward to that. All right. Well, Brad, thank you so much. And uh, we'll talk to you again next month. Yep. Sounds great. Thank you, guys. Thank you. It's Sam Smith and Normandy now.